Good morning guys, James here from Sunseeker Southampton down in a very sunny Swanwick Marina. Uh, this afternoon we're going to run out a 2019 Fairline Targa 43 Open. I've just taken this one in part exchange against the new build Sunseeker and we sold her to the previous owner here in Swanwick last year so I know the boat very well. She's just behind me here in the water. Here she is. So it's actually a 2018 build delivered 2019. She's a 2019 model. Just have a little look around the outside. I wanted to just start off with the canopies on, although we'll be taking those off for the drone shots today. So she's called Cruiser, UK tax paid. Started off life in the Channel Islands with the first owner. We took her in part exchange early last summer against another new build Sunseeker. Came to Swanwick here, we paid the VAT. She had about 18 months with her second owner and we've just taken her I say back into stock again so we'll go through a full dealer approved prep over the coming weeks so the boat will be serviced anti-fouled go through all the systems we've just had a survey done which is reassignable to the new owner if you wish uh, very very clever innovative boat we've got two large cabins both on suite we've got a midships master in the middle here which on a boat of this size is pretty much unheard of nobody else in the market i'm aware doing that then we've got a nice sized tender garage in the back here, which will take a Williams 280 mini jet tender. We do have one of those available potentially as part of the sale if you wish. Platform on the back's hydraulic here, that'll lift 400 kilos, which will take a jet ski if you wish. Uh, previous owner running a Sea-Doo Spark on the back, which he's taken off and we've had fitted to the new boat. So it's got the capacity to take both toys if you wish. Obviously with that hard top roof and the canopies as you see it at the moment, very practical to use here in the UK. We're just coming to the end of November. It's a, as you can see, clear, crisp day here. It'd be lovely out on the water and very usable 365 days a year. So we've got a sliding hard top up there, which is a fabric rather than a GRP center section. It just means actually the opening is a little bit bigger than you'd otherwise get with a solid roof. You see those lovely big windows down the side that let a lot of natural light in downstairs. So we'll check all of that out when we get on for a better look round. And we're powered by Volvo's IPS system, so they're D6435 engines, badged up as IPS 600s. We've got a bow thruster, joystick control, dynamic positioning, etc. So lovely tech spec to go with this lovely external look. So jump on, I'm just going to take the canopies off and we'll check back in just doing a start up and get the boat ready to depart the dock. Okay, so take two. Here we are now with the canopies removed. You can see, just have a quick walk round. So you can get a feel for how that opens the boat up. Obviously for the nice days when you'd rather be out in the sunshine. So we've got the aft canopies off and we've just popped the roof open as well. So the main battery switches are down just inside the companionway hatch into the cabin, which I'll show you in a bit, but we're just gonna do a cold start up. Haven't run the engines up this morning. So up here at the helm, little plastic fob, modern Volvo engines, and they just swipe across this panel here. We see we've got green ignition lights, and they fire into life. So you can hear they're very quiet. Engines are actually sat. Effectively, we've got the, the sun pad, then we've got the garage, and the engines below. We'll have a look when we get back in how they work. And up here at the helm, we've got Volvo's optional seven inch color touchscreen multifunction display, as well as a nice 12 inch color chart plotter here. So we've got lots of different options on here. So today I'll probably use something like this, which is the chart function. You can see it's pinched to zoom here. Little triangles are, are AIS targets as the boat has both send and receive function on AIS. And then we'll keep this one for monitoring engine displays. We've got a few analog gauges up the top here for temperatures, fuel tanks, and hours and what have you. So we're running 261 hours on the engines. Obviously that's gonna creep up just a little bit today with us running down the river and back from photo shoot. So just having a look around the helm itself, down here we've got an anchor chain counter, remote control spotlight, jabs go up on the roof, fire suppression system in the engine bay, which has just been serviced. We've got fly-by-wire EVC throttle controls, 
the joystick which we're going to use today is part of the IPS package uh, bow thruster control down here as well and then coming across this side we've got a control panel for our wipers which obviously look like they have some sort of controlled speed delay function a multi-function Garmin display here which will give all manner of different information and then we've got our control buttons for things like lighting in the cockpit the roof pumps battery link switches and what have you it's a nice ergonomic helm you see the VHF handset down there and slightly different to how some other builders do it we've actually got the helm seat here inboard and then co-pilot on the outside so it just means when you're sat here at the helm you're a little bit more centralized in the boat you see with the camera spun around here I've got loads of visibility through all of this lovely glass we've got opening window here over on the passenger side as well as here at the helm just going to open that up and that allows you to get your head out down the side when you required helm seats themselves these obviously slide fore and aft to give you a comfy driving position and down here we've got a nice lift up platform which gives you just that little bit of extra height to look out over the top of the windscreen frame when you wish and you'll notice we've got this lovely teak it's absolutely great condition this teak and it's on the cockpit the bathing platform and down the side decks so we're just going to get the boat set up to take it off the dock here and we've got plenty of time to look around the boat when we're heading off down the river as always i'm joined with kim here who's going to do our lines and fenders so we'll just come around and explain to you how we're going to set the boat up for departure so we've got spring lines in the middle here we're just going to drop off and then what i'll do is i'll take kim up onto the bow here to hold the bow line we'll just drop the stern line off and we'll be away so we're just going to get set up check back in a bit so we've actually got quite a tight gap in here so it's funny sort of 45 degree departure from the berth here so it'd be good to test the joystick out and see how that works so we've taken the springs out kim's just holding that bow on the cleat of the slip line and I've got the stern line here ready so literally I'm just going to take the stern line off here drop it on the bathing platform come up to the helm and say okay all good Kim she's going to take that off we're now on the joystick control so you'll see how this works as we come off the dock we've got the wind blowing from our port side here so just going to let the wind gently drift us out nice thing with the joystick it's got a low and a high power function so you can see we're actually pretty tight in on this Manhattan 68 just off to our starboard side I've got complete control of the boat here winds now you can see on the flags there just about got enough room to spin the boat round see how close we are on this flag just through our starboard window It looks like we're all good so we're out of the mooring here and all I do now is literally just spin onto my sticks and we're straight off and on the way back on our conventional throttle controls joystick is absolutely fantastic we'll have a better play with that when we get out from the marina and you can see how the uh, dynamic positioning system works but you can see just coming down the fairway we've got great visibility all around us here The wind's still over on this sort of back right hand corner behind us so we're just going to make our way down the fairway here and out to the main river channel and i'll get kim to stow the ropes and fenders away we'll have a look around the boat and then we'll get her out onto open sea so you can see what she's like up at speed and also we'll get the drone out of course 
get some nice running shots of the boat so you can see what she's like from the outside up on the plane see just as docile as a shaft boat here just using one engine at a time we could if we wish here actually put the boat back on the joystick and it'll do about four or five knots so just hold the joystick straight ahead and I can steer you can see the nose moving there as I just steer the top we have got complete control of the boat on the joystick itself it's a very very clever system they obviously use it on the stern drives and even on shaft boats these days but if we wanted to now we can engage sideways thrust and rotate the top at the same time spin the boat round there and then just drop it back onto the sticks and off we go so as always we're on a six knot speed limit down the river here so we're just going to get our ropes and fenders stowed and we'll check back and have a little bit more of a look around what the boat's got to offer so here we are just heading off down the handball kim's at the helm so we're going to have a quick look round the boat before we get out to open sea so you can see here on the starboard side we've got a full wet bar arrangement so there's a electric griddle on the top there sink with hot and cold water a pull out refrigeration drawer and an ice maker We've got fusion AV head unit for the cockpit here which has got speakers up in the ceiling here and that's Bluetooth so it'll talk to your phone iPads and what have you nice little corner tub seat here um, cushions removable and there's a locker in there and also the um, the fuel tucked down there are the um, emergency fuel taps shut off and then loads of really social seating it's a great space here you can see obviously it's underneath the roof itself so just sat down here at the back we've got loads of space around us uh, this is a fold out table I'm going to cut a picture in here just to show how that folds out there's a nice Besanzoni Italian design stainless leg with a teak top there that pops out from underneath the cushion and then we've got storage lockers so this one's a good size locker in the back there you can see we've got some ropes and fenders away backrest cushion here itself so that just pulls forward like so just to extend that sun pad when you wish see vast get four adults across the back of that no problem at all um, again more storage so this one tucked up under here this one's a storage locker and then we've got a nice little chaise here opposite the helm so very social here for chatting across the helm and still part of the action if you've got guests sat down the back there obviously with these nice little side opening windows you can get the ventilation in here on the hotter days uh, so coming aft we've got mediterranean style stern docking winches the buttons on the back here so we've got the hydraulics for the garage lid and the bathing platform control we'll have a look at all of that when we get back in some handy little bins for tailing off the lines there it's just looking down the side you see the beautiful teak decks the gel coat despite the fact that it's now end of season gel coat's still pretty shiny of course we'll go through and detail all of that prior to hand over to the next owner so we've got water filler here on the deck lots of midships cleats for lines uh, these little stainless steel things on the deck here are low level blue led ambient lights for the evening and then up forward we've got a giant sun pad An emergency escape hatch down to the forward cabin and then an electric anchor winch there lumar winch ultra anchor stainless steel up front there and stainless steel chain as well which is a nice spec addition expensive on boats to do that uh, if we walk back down the other deck I'll just show you how that works onto the bathing platform so we can't obviously access the cockpit from this side without climbing over the seat um, up on the roof so we've got an hd Garmin colour radar, VHF aerial, the dynamic positioning aerial over there for the station hold and GPS that we'll play with in a bit, TV aerial, 
and then an AIS and GPS aerial up the top just above that remote control spotlight. So it's a nice AV spec. Have to excuse the wind here, it's a bit fresh today. Uh, this is the day hatch down into the engine room. It's a galley, sorry, the garage floor actually lifts up to give you access in there when required. You can see the fittings in the platform here, which would allow you to fit a, a jet ski if you wish. So we've taken the chocks off to put onto the owner's new boat. So we've got a hot and cold transom shower and a freshwater inlet. Uh, there's a freshwater deck wash outlet up in the anchor section as well. So boat presents very nicely. We've got some funky blue LED mood lights and white lights up in the roof here. All very bright and modern. These painted mullions through here just add a little bit more feeling of quality and bespokeness. So before we get out to open sea, I'm just going to take you down into the accommodation. So we've got two cabins plus a central saloon here, L-shaped sofa here on the starboard side and we've been asked whether it'd be possible to turn this into a third bed and the answer is yes, we would just need to put an electric high-low leg and a fill-in cushion over the top and that could quite happily make a compact double for two more adults. Up top here, well thought out, so we've got loads of storage lockers. You can see these lovely inlaid leather panels. So the wood is a, a Venge wood, gloss finish. This is the electric panel I referred to earlier. So this is the battery switches and then we've got the 240 volt side with the generator start. Um, it's a Fisher Panda unit in there and then up top you can see controls for things like the reverse cycle aircon which comes out of the vents up top here speakers up in the ceiling which are linked into that samsung tv in the middle and we've got this sort of opti gray mirrors so slightly darker than normal but makes the boat feel a lot brighter works really nicely with this sort of silver oak color natural flooring big um big access hatches here down into the bilges just pop that up and you can see be very nice clean and tidy down there so we've got electric pumps we've got the seacocks for the um, aircon system this will be the tank for the waste system which is obviously for both fore and aft toilets we'll just drop that one back down uh, this one behind the door here is a storage locker you can put your bottles of water and what have you in that one and then galley itself linear galley here over on the port side so we've got a central refrigerator little ice compartment in the top there factory crockery set lots of storage for pans and what have you tucks up underneath the sink and a storage thing to hold a plastic bin in that one, which is up in the cockpit. Uh, this is a microwave oven tucked up in the forward bulkhead there. It's a proper convection sharp unit. Then we've got a single stainless steel sink, nice worktop, little sort of inbuilt routed out drainage channels there. And we've got the two burner ceramic hogtop. Then up top, so controls for the waste tank. We've got a booster for the aerial on the TV. And then the crockery set from Fairline there. You can see the plates will have you all tucked away nicely on a peg storage system for security when you're out at sea. So two cabins. Start in the aft. This is the master cabin. I say very rare on a boat of this size to get a midships master. But you'll notice we come down through the door. We've got the heads compartment first where we've got a good sized shower. You see with a little seat in there. Come in and shut the door. You see loads of room in here. And the heads themselves, so we've got an electric flush, automatic vacuum flush toilet system, sinks, there'll be some cupboards up top here. Looking around things like the edges of the mirrors and what have you, everything looks nice and clean. Um, outlets for the aircon stroke heating system 
also into the bathrooms which is nice for drying out your wet weather gear coming down into the cabin itself just on the wall here underneath the stairs is the main electric breaker panel so we've got the AC side here for the main domestic systems and then the DC battery again the wood is absolutely fantastic I'm trying to stand back so you can just see the reflection the lacquer work is beautiful on here I did notice there's a couple of little things in the floor here but all in all I would say presents very nicely for her year so coming back into the cabin itself you'll notice as we're coming down we've got a couple of steps behind us underlit obviously a little bit of attention to detail so the bed runs thwart ships here with the headboard on the starboard side we've got nice little bedside tables there you'll hear the gentle humming away of the engines behind they're in obviously the bulkhead behind us here not often on a boat of this size that you'd be running at night trying to sleep so you obviously don't have a crude space for the owner so safe on the port side again with all that lovely ambient lighting makes it very bright and modern in here and we've got big windows here both sides with blinds of course led reading lamps either side of the bed we've got some nice detailing on the headboard here um, aircon control panel over here we're on uk three pin sockets and we've got usbs as well by the bed which is a nice touch so a couple of storage cupboards there's a safe in that cupboard full height hanging locker and then just a little bit of storage in the top and the bottom here and um, all the manuals and books from you this obviously is the back of the electric cupboard that we had a look at when we first came into the cabin lovely lovely space down here huge um huge length bed it's i should say if you're sort of six foot six you'd have no problem on that whatsoever so coming forward we've got two access doors here so this is the jack and jill arrangement into the day head come second heads for the uh, the guest cabin here but we'll start off this side we're coming effectively what into the very versatile cabin so set up currently here as you see it in a double configuration and these literally slide outboard like so and if you've got a couple of more grown-up kids everybody stays happy when they're on the boat um, up top as always tucked under the deck heads themselves we've got side cupboards Let's stick some lights on again lots of plug sockets now uh, there's some storage cupboards in the end of the here this is the um, aircon unit for the front cabin there's a storage in the middle there wood again always really nice touch on a fair line presents very nicely so we've got a little bit of storage in the bottom here obviously this is the back of the um, microwave oven and then this side is a full height hanging wardrobe uh, under the floor here obviously is a bow thruster there's a fire extinguisher in that compartment that we've just had serviced and then we come into the bathroom again you can see good size shower and then we've got the heads themselves with a sink and again some, some cupboards in the in the top here so let's head back on up just going to get the boat final check over make sure everything's good and we'll be off out on our sea trials so here we are up the top of Southampton Water, Ocean Village just up here in the distance. Just done a quick run up to speed, check everything is all good to go. We're just going to run back down here. A little bit of tide punching us on the nose here as high tides in a couple of hours time. We're just going to get her up and going here and you can see what she's like coming onto the plane. So we straighten up the steering and you just open the throttles up here. Now you notice being IPS the boat stays very level when it comes up a little bit more like a hydrofoil rather than the shaft boats where you'd really disappear the horizon before the nose drops down. You can see she's up and onto the plane. We're up to 27 knots already. Very, very quick out of the water. 
say very impressive look at that lovely weight shot there behind us so we've just buried the throttle and we're up to full rpm straight away so say punching tide and there we are sitting about just over the 30 knot mark so i'd say two-way average probably doing about 31 knots nice balance so being like this again all clear behind us stick it into some turns here look out through the roof fantastic things to drive very very just throwing it across on the steering here nice big sweeping s turns see we're still up oh, haven't lost any speed there at all look the speed as we come around confuse the yacht just in front of us here so we'll go past the yacht and then we'll do a a little donut just to show you what she's like round in a circle so flat out we got all the fuel computer here 169 liters an hour there for the pair and if we bring her back to a more sensible cruise speed you see the speed just dropping back there i would suggest we want to be about there you can see we're running about 2850 rpm and we drop back to 110 litres an hour that would be where i would see this boat typically cruising and that's channel islands in about five hours from here across to jersey so we just clear behind us so we're just going to stick it into a hard left hand turn here put the throttles back down you'll see the boat banking over here still up look at that 28 knots a little bit of wash here no banging and crashing going to level her back up and oh, we've lost our anchor anchor lock has popped open there must not have done the catch up when we took the fenders away earlier so you can see we're back up 29 knots here we'll sit quite comfortably the two of us across the cows in 20 minutes from the handle here at this sort of speed down to pool in a couple of hours i say that cruise speed really for me would be about that 23 knots range where we'll be back down to a much more manageable 100 to 110 litres an hour that's really where I see it boat's well balanced you can see she's running very level there nice clean wake behind us it's not too noisy here in the cockpit I'm just going to cut the camera for a sec so we can sort the Anchor lock out and we'll be back. So here we are just taking a look with the drone from different angles as we run along around 20 knots. Just having a look up the starboard side here. Beautiful profile shot with the sun on that lovely shiny white gel coat. As we come around to the front here, just see the boat from a slightly different angle. Of course, then a top down shot here can see into the cockpit and of course that lovely sun pad on the front and then to finish off we just have a nice little profile shot here from up high so whilst Kim just kips that locker down I'm just going to shut the roof here so you can see how that transforms the cockpit at the touch of a button so I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap here so you can see obviously that lets a bit of air in And we'll get the boat back up and going now so obviously just running through some of the nav kit here so we've got things like a, a radar on here so we'll just put our radar powered up and we've also got a, a built-in autopilot which will work off the plotter system here so find our transmit on so we're just spinning up And if we go into something like that, that will give us a chart with a radar overlay over the top. So we can see things like the big ships over here 
off on the starboard side and another one which is the dockhead here for the oil tankers So some other cool stuff on the display here as well as fuel, obviously dropping back here. So we're at 6.9 knot speed now. We drop back to 7.8 liters an hour. So see if you're quite happy to chug along at slow speed. It's great. Our boat is in autopilot at the moment. So you can see I've got option to put it back into standby if you wish. And you can just control that on the joystick here. So we can flick through, we've got temperatures, pressures, 22% fuel in here at the moment. So reasonably light load. Um, Self-leveling as well, so we've got a handy function there when the wind's up like it is today, just to keep the boat level. So this is all running through the NEMA 2000 network, so it's got all the same displays and it will actually do um, mini chart plotter and all sorts on here. You can see there's loads of things to play around with. Again, this one's quite nice. I like to tend to have that on the speed and depth. And we put this one back. Into gauges, there that's the one. So, we're just going to put her back into standby, so that means I've got control of my steering again. We'll just open her back up, last little run back into the river. So, you hear the 435s have got turbo and supercharged, so very, very quick out of the hole. And you get a feel now with that roof closed, obviously, with the lights turned off in here. We're just going to come out of the channel so we don't upset the ferry coming ahead of us. And we'll head back in towards the mouth of the Hamble. Uh, so the boat was last serviced in November last year, so 2020, uh, by the local Volvo main dealers. And of course, we'll do a full main dealer service on the engines using the local dealers again on the Hamble prior to handover, service the generator, say lift the boat out to do a hull polish and a fresh anti and what have you so she should be then pretty much ready to go for the 22 season which is not far away now um, there will be an option to have a berth at Swanick if you wish to stay local with us obviously nice to keep the boat where we can maintain it for you and put it into a guardianage service so we can have it washed off and maintaining it and what have you for you on a fortnightly basis um, and as normal we would put three month labour warranty of course on any of our used stock boats going through the systems to make sure everything's good prior to handover so that's us done out here on the open water so we're just going to slow down we're coming back up on the south cardinal here marking the bottom of the river we're just going to give everything a nice chance to cool down 25 minutes back up the river and join us back in so you can see the boat being docked back into her mooring. So here we are just coming back into Swanwick Marina. So we've trying again like we did recently, we've got a camera up on the side there so you can see me on the controls as we come in here try and show you how this all works. So we're going to come down the fairway here on the throttle controls and then when we get towards the berth itself we'll switch over onto the joystick and you'll see how that works in the close quarters again. So we're doing everything nice and slow as always, give us as much time as possible. So we've got a pretty tight mooring to get back in here, actually the wind's going to make this quite complicated manoeuvre but hopefully with that IPS joystick and a little bow thruster control down here we should be able to manage this okay so what we're going to do is come straight down the central fairway here till we get to the end and we're going to spin round stern up into the wind bow down the river we've got to do 180 degrees and just lift the camera up and you can see We've got to get tucked in in front of that nose of the grey axe bar up ahead there. And the wind's coming from sort of 45 degrees onto our nose. So once we spin the boat round 180, it's going to be on our aft 
airport quarter. Now you can drive these just like a stern drive boat, so we could use our throttle and steering controls. You do need to use both together if you're going to do that, as it doesn't do much on just the engines themselves. So I'm going to switch now onto the joystick. Just give you a view of what I'm seeing around here behind us. Obviously we've got the anchor on the back of that 68 to watch for and the bow of this 55 in front of us. So we're now effectively sitting broadside in the wind. Don't have much spare working room here, so you're just going to do everything nice and slow in that way. If <laughs> looks like we're getting a bit tight, Kim will tell me. To come out, obviously, if we're doing it slow, we can always just come back out and have another go at it. So you can see behind us here, just easing round on the nose of that 68. Just little baby movements. And where we're going to end up is back into that corner mooring there. So I've actually got the tide coming in, which is taking me that way. And then the wind blowing us off the mooring. So both working against each other, which isn't ideal. Just starting to flick that bow around now. We've got a little axe par down behind us, so we don't want to squish that when we come in. Just doing everything nice and slow. You notice we haven't had to use the bow thruster yet. It's nice to know we've got it. The rotational point on the IPS is actually quite far back into the cockpit, so the bow thruster is quite handy if you ever just got the nose drifting out a bit. You can see we're pretty much, see Kim's just down on the back there, so what we'll do is just tease it back in. Little movement on the joystick itself. Nice thing with this little platform down under my feet is I can actually look over the top. So I could leave the helm here, go and have a quick look over the side, see how much room we've got to work with. Could get my crew to call me in here at this point if I needed to, but just now we can joystick over sideways. And when Kim's happy, she'll step off on the back there. And there she is, so she's just going to jump off. Sec second cleat back, please. So not, not the very back. Next one, next one forward. So she's just going to get that stern secured on there. See with the joystick, got lots of power here, so I can keep control of all of this. So the wind's blowing us off the mooring at the moment. And we've got our bow line set up there, so you'll see she just pull that 
over the top. Now I could, rather than using my joystick now, I could just switch across to my bow thruster and see she's got that tied off. So we're in. So we leave the helm as we, as we would do. So we just come and have a quick check. So we got the boat back on its mooring now. So I can put the camera down there. You can see what we're going to do. So I'm just going to bring the stern slightly further back. So I'm just going to bring it back. Okay. Get that one nice and tight on there, like so. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to put this spring on to so take a full turn around the cleat. Lock that off there. And then with Kim's line here, so what we'll do is just take that one around there. A couple of figures of eight. Back up and onto this. Forward cleat, so. Couple of lock knocks, tidy up the tails, and we're in. So we're just going to tidy up our fenders, shut the boat down now, we're back in safely. So turning the engines off is much the same as the startup, so just the buttons on here. And we have to turn the ignitions off before the garage control works. So having turned those off, we'll just finish off and have a look here in the back. So a couple of buttons here, and you'll hear the beeping as the garage wears into life. Just got to watch the flagpole up top there. Show how that works. So that comes up like that. And we'll show you how the platform drops down as well. So I'm not going to submerge that. So let's head down and have a look how this all works. So platform's obviously semi-submersed. You can now see the underwater lights, colour changing, you have them white or blue or multicolour as it's doing here. You can see the interceptor trim tab system there for the self-leveling that we played around with earlier. Um, two little catches in the floor here and the whole base of the garage here will lift up on the electric ram to give access for more serious servicing. The day-to-day -day servicing itself can be done through the hatch here. We'll just go down and have a quick look how it works. Uh, light switch in here. So we've got everything's very compact. You can see obviously tucked right up against the lid of the garage there. So we've got fuel filters in the middle. We've got water strainers there. So you don't have to clamber underneath for day-to-day -day checks. Um, breaker for the bow thruster, battery charger, and what have you. And you can see the sort of available space in an emergency. There's enough room to clamber under there if you needed to get a pumps or what have you. Uh, generator's obviously fitted in a nice soundproof box there. Just come back up. Drop that one down and we'll pop. This one up. So, button here takes a little bit of time. It's electric, electric rams rather than the big, powerful hydraulic ones that are on the garage and the platform. And it's not something you'd be doing every day, but it's really handy for kind of more uh, serious service work, as it does give you much better access. So, I'm just going to fast forward the camera here. And there you have it. It's obviously massive expanse with the floor lift up there. And then we've got perfect access in top of the pods for oil changes and straight on the top of those D6s for doing the heat exchanges at the back here and general service work and what have you. So we've just serviced the engine bay extinguisher system. 
So apart from the engine and pod service, that side of the machinery space should be good to go for the rest of next season. Um, as, as we said earlier, they say the garage itself will take a Williams 280 mini jet. I have got one of those potentially on site if you're interested to go with the boat. And there she is. So, hope you've enjoyed that. Good look round today. Nice chance to get the boat out and see what she's capable of at sea. I don't think this one's going to be around for long. Uh, the model's recently been replaced by the Targa 45, which is much of the same boat with a, a little facelift, if you like. So it offers a lot of value for money. Going on the market, £695 uh, tax paid. And uh, a line here in Swanwick available for viewing seven days a week, as always. Got lots of photos and, and walk around. So if you need any more info, please get in touch directly. It's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven. Hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to hearing from you soon.